Hello everyone. Assalamu alaikum. And it's a very good morning to you all. This is Muhammad Amir Islam. I welcome you all to my today's online class. Uh, I'm a bit late because of some technical reasons. Anyway, hopefully, you all are well by the grace of Almighty Allah. Uh, as you see on the board, our today's class uh, will be on the course financial management within bracket in English. This is an important course for the students of our third year of the Department of Accounting. And uh, students of other disciplines of business studies, they, have, they also have to learn this course. Uh, but it is particularly important for the accounting students. And you know, this course uh, will be learned by the accounting students in English. And our chapter title is Goals and Functions. I mean, we are going to, I'm going to speak on uh, basically goals and functions of financial management. Anyway, uh, today I'd like to begin my uh, session with the definition of finance. Okay. Indian writers, M. Y. Khan and P. K. Jain. M. Y. Khan and P. K. Jain, very prominent professors of finance. They gave a one-line definition of finance. According to them, finance is the art and science of managing money. This is a very plain and simple definition of finance. Finance is the art and science of managing money. American writer uh, Lawrence J. Gitman, he also defined finance in the same language. He also said finance can be defined as the art and science of managing money. Unfortunately, uh, we cannot really understand the subject matter of finance from this definition very clearly. I mean, this, is, this seems to be an in, incomplete definition which does not really reflect the uh, true subject matter of finance. Basically, in the narrow sense, finance is the, uh, if we talk about finance from the point of view of narrow sense, from the narrow sense, finance is simply procurement of funds by the corporate enterprises to meet their financing needs. But in the broader sense, finance is associated with a number of financial activities like procurement of funds, use of funds, controlling of funds, and coordinating the financial activities. So we can give a broader definition of finance by adopting the broader sense. Let me write down that definition. Finance can be defined as a discipline, as a discipline of knowledge which is concerned which is concerned with a number of financial activities like procurement of funds, use of funds, controlling of funds and coordinating the financial activities. So perhaps 
from this definition, we can understand the real subject matter of finance. Basically, procurement of funds, use of funds, controlling of funds, and coordinating the financial activities. These are the pros and cons of finance. Now let us talk about the financial management. Financial management. Financial management uh, is an integral part of overall management of the business. Financial management basically is concerned with a number of, uh, with some managerial activity. I repeat, financial management is concerned with managerial activity, which is associated with the planning and control of a firm's financial resources. From the point of view of a layman, we can say financial management uh, is concerned with some managerial activities, which are associated with the uh, planning and controlling of a firm's financial resources. Perhaps you have heard the name of uh, James C. Van Horn, the American writer, very prominent in the field of finance, who wrote a fine book on financial management. James C. Van Horn gave a very fine definition of financial management. Let me write down that definition. According to James C. Van Horn. Financial management is concerned with the acquisition financing and management of assets. Financial management is concerned with the acquisition, financing, and management of assets with some overall goals in mind. If you go through the definition properly, you can easily identify the important areas of financial management. Look, acquisition. Acquisition means acquiring assets. For attaining the business objectives, you have to make investment in different types of assets. So acquisition is an indication of investment decision. Then financing. For acquiring assets, we require uh, we, are required to, we, are, we are required to manage finances from different sources. So financing decision is also uh, given in that definition. This is related with the investment decision. This is relating, related with the financing decision. And at the end, management of assets. Van Horn talked about the management of assets. It is necessary to ensure efficient asset management to attain the business objectives. So according to the definition of James C. Van Horn, there are three important areas. Number one, investment decision, then financing decision, and then management of asset, asset management decision. That is all about the definition of, uh, given by James C. Van Horn. But according to modern approach, according to modern approach financial management can be broken down into three major decisions as the functions of finance. 
According to modern approach, financial management can be broken down into three major decisions as the functions of finance. Those major decisions are number one, investment decision, which was also cited by James C. Van Horn in his definition of financial management. Then financing decision. This is also mentioned in the definition of James C. Van Hall. The only thing missing in the definition is dividend decision. These are the major areas of financial management from the point of view of modern approach. Uh, which was mentioned by James C. Van Horn in his definition, which is asset management decision. Asset management decision. So, we can say these decisions can be regarded as the functions of finance from the modern point of view. Investment decision, financing decision, dividend decision, and asset management decision. At the very beginning, perhaps you can remember, our chapter title was Goals and Functions. These are the major decisions that can be regarded as the major functions of finance. Okay? Now, let us talk about all these issues uh, precisely and concisely. First, investment decision. investment decision this is investment decision is also known as capital budgeting decision okay uh, basically investment investment decision relates to the selection of assets i repeat investment decision relates to the selection of assets in which f a firm makes its investment investment decision relates to the selection of assets in which uh, investments are made by a firm. At a firm, Jeshumusto Shumpa de Binyuk Kuratake, Shiguli Hoche, investment decision at Bishagosto. Okay? It has got two dimensions. Investment decision has got two dimensions. Number one, investment in long term assets, and at the same time, investment in short term assets. It has two dimensions. Number A, investment in long-term assets and then investment in short-term assets. I mean, you have to points, but you have to go through your book. You have to go through your book. You have to go through your book. Key points below to make it deal. Anyway, uh, investment decision relates to the selection of assets in which uh, a firm's uh, a firm makes its investment. It has got two dimensions. Number one, investment in long-term assets and investment in current assets. Investment in long-term assets is also known as ca capital budgeting decision. Okay, investment in long-term assets is also known as capital budgeting decision. Basically, uh, every firm has to make investment in long-term assets and you know long-term assets are, sorry, okay. Sorry, huh. investment in fixed assets. Uh, you know, fixed assets are the assets which are retained by the firm for longer period of time, 
for revenue generation. Land and building, plant and machinery, uh, intangibles like goodwill, patent, trademark, copyright. These are the examples of fixed assets or long-term assets. For maximizing the wealth of the shareholders, every firm has to invest in these sorts of fixed assets. And then investment in current assets. Investment in current assets is also known as working capital management. We know for maximizing the profit or maximizing the wealth of the shareholders, we have to ensure uninterrupted production and sales operation. If we want to ensure uninterrupted production operation, we have to maintain sufficient stock of uh, raw materials and supplies and sufficient stock of work in progress. At the same time, if you want to ensure uninterrupted sales operation, we have to maintain sufficient stock of finished goods. And we have to make credit sales to, to increase our customer base. So, we have to make investment in current assets as well. So, investment decision is all about this uh, investment in long term assets and investment in current assets. Now, let us talk about the financing decision. financing decision. Financing decision has a very close relationship with investment decision. You know, every firm has to rely on long-term sources like common stock, preferred stock, bond for making investment in fixed assets. And uh, generally, firms rely on short-term sources for investing in current assets. Financing decision is associated with the financing mix or capital structure of the organization. You have to keep in mind it, keep in your keep it in your mind. I mean Financing decision is associated with the financing mix or capital structure of the firm. You have to keep it in your mind. Financing decision is associated with the financing mix or capital structure of the firm. Now, uh, we have to know what a capital structure is. Basically, capital structure is the composition of different long-term sources of funds like common stock, preferred stock, bond, return earning that actually make the funds of the business. I repeat, capital structure is the composition of different long-term sources of finances like common stock, preferred stock, bond and return earnings that actually make the funds of the business. This capital structure uh, represents the permanent capital which are generally invested in long term assets, which are generally invested in fixed assets. So as a financial manager, you have to identify the right combination, right combination of capital structure that will ensure you to have optimum capital structure. Okay. Now the question is, what an optimum capital structure is? An optimum capital structure is a kind of capital structure uh, that ensures minimum weighted average cost of capital and maximum value of the firm. Okay, let me write down the definition of capital structure. Capital structure is the composition of different long-term sources of funds like common stock, preferred stock, bond and written earning
that actually make the thorns of the business. As a financial manager, you have to identify the right combination of different long term sources, so that you can make your capital structure optimum. And optimum capital structure means a capital structure where weighted average cost of capital of the firm is the lowest and the value of the firm is the highest. At the same time, the firm is the lowest and the value of the firm is the highest. At the same time, the firm is the lowest and the value of the firm is the highest. At the same time, the firm is the lowest and the value so, this is uh, an important dimension of financing decision that you have to make your capital structure optimum. Kotha prashan ki ekhan arakta kotha bole rakha bhalo. Sheta hoche je financial structure bole arakta jini shashe. You have to understand. Financial structure. Financial structure means actually capital structure plus current liabilities. Arthat, capital structure bulta amra shudhi buzbo, combination of different long term sources, but in case of financial structure, financial structure will be equal to capital structure plus current liabilities. So, if you want to distinguish between these two, capital structure and financial structure, you have to say, capital structure covers only long-term sources of funds. I repeat, capital structure covers only the long-term sources of funds. On the other hand, financial structure represents the whole liability side of the balance sheet that includes long-term sources as well as current liabilities. Hopefully, you have got the point. Now, let me talk about the dividend decision. Number three, you have to say that 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 you have to say that. Dividend decision, the third major area of financial management is dividend decision. And this decision is specifically related with the dividend policy of the firm. Okay, dividend policy is the rector, close relationship. We have got two alternatives. I repeat, we have got two alternatives uh, in dealing with the uh, profit earned by the company. We have got two alternatives in dealing with the profit earned by the company. Number one, we can pay dividend. And number two, we can retain the earning instead of paying dividend. Okay. So, uh, we have to understand first dividend. Dividend refers to a firm's net earnings, that is, uh, uh, dividends refer to a firm's net earnings which are distributed, which are paid out to the shareholders. I repeat, dividends refer to the firm's net earnings that are paid out to the shareholders. Farmer, IR, Jomsho, shareholder, their Mudhamra, Bontun Kurudi, that is exactly what is called dividend. And then retained earnings, retained earnings refer to that portion of a firm's net earning which are retained by the firm for reinvestment. That is a major decision. The payment of dividend, this decision is depending on two issues. Number one, you have to consider the preference of the shareholders. Shareholder are key chai, shita to make a consider And then you have to think about the available investment opportunities. तो भी देख बेजो तुम्हारे हाथे बिनों के शुद्ध का सही किना जब दे बिनों के शुद्ध ना था के तो इट इस बेटर टू पे डिविडेंड जब दे बिनों के शुद्ध था के शेखते यू कैन मेक रीइन्वेस्टमेंट इन दैट केस तुम्हें आई टेक रिटेन करते पारो सो डिविडेंड डिसीजन इज ऑल अबाउट दिस आमिर शंके भी एक तो लिखे � It involves how to deal with the 
profit of the company. Okay. The dividend decision involves how to deal with the profit of the company. Two alternatives. You have got two alternatives. Number A, pay dividend and then number B, retain the earning. Okay. To me, ki korbe? Dividend dibe? Na ki earning tag retain korbe? Ekhane mere bolle rakhi. This decision of paying dividend depend on. Two things. This decision of paying dividend depend on two things. Number one, the preference of the shareholders. Shareholder ki chai, shetar hapte hobe, and then the available. Investment opportunities with the farm. So, by considering these two points, you have to make a decision whether you are going to pay dividend or not. Jodi, Ebapare, Patugulo Toto, there are a number of theories regarding dividend policy. এটা আমাদের চার নম্বর অধ্যায়ে যখন যাব তখন আমরা এটা ডিটেইল জানতে পারব তাহলে সংক্ষেপে আমরা বলতে পারি যে ডিভিডেন্ড পলিসি ইনভলভস হাউ টু ডিল উইথ দ্য प्रॉफिट অফ দ্য কোম্পানি উই हैव गॉट टू অল্টারনেটিভস উই ক্যান পে ডিভিডেন্ড অর ইউ ক্যান রিটেইন আর্নিং এখন হোয়াট এভার ইউ আর গোইং টু ডু দ্যাট উইল ডিপেন্ড অন টু থিংস দ্য প্রেফারেন্স অফ দ্য শেয়ারহোল্ডারস এন্ড দ্য अवेलेबल ইনভেস্টমেন্ট অপরচুনিটিস উইথ দ্য ফার্ম ওকে যদি শেয়ারহোল্ডাররা কি চায় তারা যদি লভ্যাংশ পেতে চায় তাহলে তোমাকে ডিভিডেন্ড দিতে হবে তারা যদি ক্যাপিটাল গেইন পেতে চায় তাহলে ডিভিডেন্ড না দিয়ে ওটাকে রিইনভেস্ট করা যেতে পারে অর্থাৎ যদি বিনিয়োগের সুযোগ থাকে সেখানে বিনিয়োগ করলে পারে তাহলে তাদের ওয়েলথ ম্যাক্সিমাইজ হতে পারে এই সমস্ত বিষয়গুলো আছে যেগুলো নিয়ে আমরা চার নম্বর অধ্যায়ে যে আলোচনা করব আপাতত শুধু এই দুটো লাইন মাথায় রাখবে যে দিস টু ফ্যাক্টরস শুড বি কনসিডার্ড ইন মেকিং দি ডিভিডেন্ড ডিসিশন ওকে অ্যান্ড দি লাস্ট ইম্পর্টেন্ট ডিসিশন of the management is number four asset management decision asset management decision once once the asset have been acquired by appropriate kind of financing it is necessary to ensure uh, efficiency in using these assets okay asset kena hoye geche financing hoye geche it is time to ensure efficient asset management okay management must ensure uh, that assets are managed properly here you have to take into account two things financial manager is generally associated with the management of current assets ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল ম্যানেজার কিন্তু ফিক্সড অ্যাসেট ম্যানেজমেন্টের সাথে জড়িত থাকেন না হি ইজ মোর অ্যাসোসিয়েটেড উইথ দি ম্যানেজমেন্ট অফ কারেন্ট অ্যাসেটস অন দি আদার হ্যান্ড ম্যানেজমেন্ট অফ ফিক্সড অ্যাসেট ইজ জেনারেলি দ্য রেসপন্সিবিলিটি অফ দি অপারেটিং ম্যানেজার ওকে তো অ্যাসেট ম্যানেজমেন্ট ডিসিশনের ক্ষেত্রে এই দুটা কথা মনে রাখবে যে ইট ইজ ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল ম্যানেজার যিনি ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল ম্যানেজার ইজ মোর অ্যাসোসিয়েটেড উইথ দ্য ম্যানেজমেন্ট অফ কারেন্ট অ্যাসেটস লিখেই দিচ্ছি we have to ensure uh, efficiency in asset management and financial manager is generally 
associated with the management of current assets. And management of fixed assets is the general management of fixed asset is the responsibility of the operating managers. Okay. Regarding the asset management decision, you have to keep in mind these two points. Anyway, so these are the major areas of financial management. The investment decision, the financing decision, the dividend decision, the asset management decision. And these decisions can also be regarded as the functions of financial management. Another chapter the title chilo, goals and functions. The functions bishan holo, you have to go through your book. Okay. Now I have a guru tupun issue, jeta goals of the firm. Goals of the firm. A genista mother ke dekta hobe. Goals of the firm. Ata dekta farmer lock khoki. Profit barate chao na ke wealth barate chao. Amra likhe diye financial goal. Financial goal. Profit versus wealth. First, we are talking about profit maximization. Another chapter Duto issue as a goals, atoche functions, and we have already completed talking on functions. Now we are talking about profit uh, goals. Young Shota Kumunuzu Gishwana Testagoro. Profit maximization. Profit frequently, very frequently, profit maximization is taken as the objective of the firm. Profit maximization means maximizing the firm's net earnings. Profit maximization means maximizing the firm's net earnings after tax. Net earnings after tax. But some people recently, they also take maximizing earnings per share as, the, as an improved version of profit maximization. Let me write down the maximization of profit in one sentence. Profit maximization means maximizing a firm's net earning after tax. Okay, profit maximization means maximizing a firm's net earning after tax. Recently, some people are advocating uh, earning per share as the profit maximization. Okay. So, when we talk about the profit maximization, we talk about the profit maximization. We talk about the profit maximization. We talk about profit maximization. According to profit maximization goal, uh, the firm should undertake those actions that will help maximize the profit and avoid those actions that will, de uh, that will uh, cause decrease to the profit. I repeat, according to profit maximization objective, actions that increase profit should be undertaken and actions that decrease profit should be avoided. Okay. There are some uh, rational behind profit maximization goal. Amra the profit maximization ke amra nitchi, amader goal hisa bhi pisa ne kato gulo karon ase. Upore likchi. Rational behind 
profit maximization. Ki karan? First on profit. Profit maximization camera kya nunichi? Because profit is a test of economic efficiency. Profit is a test of economic efficiency. Okay. It provides, profit provides the benchmark. Profit provides the yardstick with which economic performance can be judged. Profit of check the Mandondo, Jatha to me economic performance can measure Kotabara Jita. So it could be Guru Tupuno. Shade point of view, take a profit is a test of economic efficiency. From this perspective, we can take profit maximization as the objective of the business. Then another important rationale is it uh, helps efficient allocation of resources. It helps efficient allocation of resources. You know, generally, resources are allocated to the activities that are, in terms of profitability, uh, better. That are better in terms of profitability. I'm the key kori. The most projected muna for jun kora khomota beshi, shikhanai amda beshi resource allocation kori. Tar mane profit is an indication of profitability. Jar profitability beshi, shikhanai resource bonto no beshi hobe. So, profit maximization objective help us uh, efficient allocation of resources. And finally, it ensures social welfare. This is another very important point. It ensures social welfare. How? By paying uh, fair wages to employees, by paying fair wages to employees, by performing some social responsibility like providing health care to the poor, providing education facilities to the poor, okay, keeping environment, okay, uh, protecting the environment by ensuring clean air, clean water. These are the different forms of social welfare. So profit maximization, but there are some serious limitation of profit maximization goal. Uh, <coughs> flaws, flaws of profit maximization. Profit maximization objective suffers from a number of flaws. First on ambiguity. First on ambiguity. Uh, the meaning, the precise meaning of profit maximization is uh, unclear. I repeat, the precise meaning of profit maximization is not yet clear. What does it mean? Whether it is long term profit or short term profit. Whether it is uh, profit after tax or profit before tax. Whether it is total profit or profit per share. These issues are not yet settled. So, from that point of view, you can say this objective is ambiguous in nature. Secondly, this is serious limitation. It ignores the time value of money. Profit maximization of objective ignores the time value of money. This is the serious, most uh, significant limitation flaw of profit maximization objective. Profit maximization objective does not make any distinction between returns received in different time periods. I repeat, profit maximization objective does not make any distinction between returns received in different time periods. Here, benefits received today and benefits received after one year are taken to be the same. This is a serious limitation. It does not re recognize the time value of money. And because of that, we are moving from profit maximization to wealth maximization. Not only that, it has got another very serious limitation. It ignores the quality 
of benefits. It ignores the quality of benefits. Quality of benefits refers to the degree of certainty with which benefit can be expected. I repeat, quality of benefit refers to the degree of certainty with which benefits can be expected. Or that apni koto nishchayatar shathe benefit tak expect korte paren. That means it is associated with the risk. But unfortunately, profit maximization objective does not take into account the risk. Theoretically, the more certain the benefits, the higher is the quality of benefit and vice versa. Benefit joto nishchayat ashbe, tar quality toto bhalo hobe. Benefit joto anishchayat hobe, tar quality toto kharap hobe. But this thing is not considered in the profit maximization goal. So this is another serious limitation. It ignores the quality of benefits. At money hoche, it does not consider the risk complexion. It it at a serious limitations. Because of these limitations, people financial uh, scholars of finance they are now replacing the profit maximization objective and accepting the wealth maximization objective because of these limitations. Now, let us move to wealth maximization. Wealth maximization. Wealth maximization is also known as value maximization. Wealth maximization is also known as value maximization. Basically, wealth maximization means maximizing the net present value of a course of action. Wealth maximization means maximizing the net present value a net present value to hocche wealth of a course of action okay ek line e likhlam ami wealth maximization means maximizing the maximizing the net present value which is actually wealth of a course of action. Now, the question is, what do you really understand by the word NPV or net present value? You are supposed to know because you have already learned capital budgeting. NPV is the difference between the present value of cash inflows and the present value of cash outflows. Okay, NPV is the difference between present value of cash inflows and present value of cash outflows. NPV is the difference between present value of cash inflows that means returns it accountable see i and present value of cash outflows that means investment Okay, and for calculating this present value, we have to use an appropriate discounting rate. You know, there are two techniques of time value of money. One is compounding technique, and the another one is discounting technique. Compounding technique is used for calculating the future value, and for calculating the present value, we have to use discounting technique. Ekhane amra ekta appropriate discounting rate bebhor kore, amra shi present value ta bear korbo. Kibabe bear korbo, ami dekhi dite uh, theory, mathematically, NPV will be equal to A subscript 1 divided by 1 plus K to the power 1, A subscript 2 divided by 1 plus K to the power 2, A subscript 3 divided by 1 plus K to the power 3 plus A subscript N divided by 1 plus K to the power N. That's the net cash outlay. 
this is called NPV. I make to the category to work a subscript one, a subscript two, a subscript three. These represent the future returns, cash inflow. Bobby should take Bosser Porridge cash inflow, the Shetaki on the Prokash column, the two Bosser Tay two, three two Bosser Tay three. Our one plus K, K represents the rate of cost of capital. This represents the discounting rate. J rate the Amra Bata Koran Kore. एक बसर परे नगद टाका के वर्तमान मूल्य रूपांतर करते हैं। दें दो बसर परे नगद टाका के वर्तमान मूल्य रूपांतर करते हैं। भावे भविष्य तक नगद उपार्जन को लेके वर्तमान मूल्य रूपांतर करे जोक करते हैं। टोटल प्रेजेंट भी लोगों ने शेखांत के आज के जो बिन्योग नेट का शाउट ले शेखांत Okay. If NPV is positive, that indicates wealth will increase. If NPV is negative, that indicates wealth will decrease okay so maximizing wealth means actually maximizing the NPV of the project this wealth maximization objective uh, has some very important rationale behind this Rational behind wealth maximization. Kijukti. First one, most important one is it considers the it considers the time value of money. Uh, that here we are converting the future cash flows uh, in terms of present value by the by applying the discounting technique. Our discounting technique that is why we can take the correct decision. First on it considers the time value of money. Secondly it considers the risk झुकी भी बेचना नहीं है, आमादर के डिसीजन नहीं तो है, इखाने, ये टाइप का बोरो बिषय। एंड फाइनली, लास्ट बट नॉट द लेस्ट, इट यूजेस कैश फ्लोज, इट यूजेस कैश फ्लोज, व्हिच इज ए क्लियर कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ मनी, ओके? In case of profit maximization objective, we take into account the term profit, which is determined by applying accrual principle in accounting. But here in this case, we take into account the cash flows, which is a clear concept of money, and because of that, we are in a position to make the correct decision. So these are the stronger logics behind wealth maximization objective. Now, I can tell you with conviction that profit maximization goal has been replaced by the wealth maximization goal because profit maximization goal has some serious limitations which we have already learned and at the same time uh, wealth maximization goal has some upper hand because of these advantages okay tale ekhonkar modern je literature tate profit maximization ke baad diye amra wealth maximization er dike giyechi okay to amader alochonar bishoy chilo ajke Goals and functions, I will talk about the topic of the topic. I will talk about the topic of the class interruption. Okay. Okay. Some other issues. Agency problem. Agency problem refers to a conflict of interest 
between the management, between the company's management and the shareholders. I mean, just from that, I the book. It refers to a conflict. Conflict of interest between a company's between a company's management and the stockholders, I mean shareholders. Just it to come in It refers to a conflict of interest between a company's management and the stockholders. You know, management are actually the agent of the shareholders. Okay? Management act as the agent of the shareholders. And uh, shareholders generally delegate their decision making authority to this management. And it is expected that management will make decisions in the best interest of the shareholders. Right? Management is the agent of the shareholders. It is expected that management will make decisions which will be in the best interest of the shareholders. In the next time, the management will make decisions in the best interest of the shareholders. That is the reason why the shareholders are the agency problem. How can you eradicate this problem? You can remove agency problem by two ways. Number one, you have to provide the management with appropriate incentives. And secondly, you have to monitor their performance. So, by providing appropriate kind of incentives to the management and by uh, monitoring their performance, we can keep agency problem within our control. Okay. Another term, agency cost. Agency costs are costs that are borne by the shareholders to prevent or minimize agency problem. I mean just Shongata Liklam. Agency costs are costs that are borne by the shareholders to prevent or minimize the agency problem. But you have to provide incentives to the uh, management. You have to give them cash bonus, you have to give them perquisites, you have to give them performance share, okay? stock options. Stock options, performance share, cash bonus, perquisites. agency cost are monitoring it, you know, to my by how the agency cost of victory, poor be. Boy pull or detail jante barbe. I'm other show my cook com. Now, another term social responsibility. Social responsibility can be defined as the obligation or commitment of the company to ensure. To, uh, to take steps to ensure uh, the surroundings, to ensure the welfare of the society. Let me write down the definition. Social responsibility can be defined as the obligation and commitment of the company to take steps to ensure welfare of the society. Very simple definition. Social responsibility can be defined as the obligation or commitment of the company to take steps to ensure welfare of the society. Uh, you can give some examples. For example, uh, protecting the consumer rights, paying fair wages to employees, 
upholding the anti-corruption policies, providing education to the poor, providing health facilities to the poor section of the society, protecting the environment by ensuring clean water and clean air. These are the examples of social responsibility. Okay? Boi poro, aro janbe. Last but not the least, corporate governance. Corporate governance, age nista shompor ke amader last kotha ta bolle shesh korbo. Corporate governance is actually the system. It is a system by which companies are directed and controlled by the management in the best interest of the shareholders. Okay, let me write down the definition. It is the system by which by which companies are directed and controlled by the management in the best interest of the stakeholders, I am going to say stakeholders, not stockholders. So corporate governance is the system by which companies are directed and controlled by the management in the best interest of the stakeholders. Uh, corporate governance clearly defines the rights and responsibilities of the key corporate participants. I repeat, corporate governance clearly defines the rights and responsibilities of the corporate participants. Who are the corporate participants? The management, the stockholders, the board of directors. These are the different corporate participants. Uh, corporate governance clearly defines defines the rights and responsibilities of the corporate participants participants such as the management, corporate participants kara, management, then the board of directors, the shareholders, okay, they are the participants, among corporate governance, either kar ki daitto kar ki odhi gari gulo sposhto gare lakha thakbe. Effective corporate governance obviously ensure transparency and accountability of the organization, of the company. Not only that, that will ensure timely financial reporting in a proper way. Okay? So you have to go through your book. This is a chapter which was totally theoretical in, uh, in nature and we had discussed theoretically all the issues relevant to this chapter. Hopefully, you have followed. Now, it is your duty to go through your book. Je boi thak na gora sheta bhalo kore pora chesta kore. Bing ei points gulo je gulo ami liflam bad dilam ei gulo mona rakhar chesta kore. Thank you so much for attending the session. Our pratham dikhe best kisi interruption hoyse class er jonno amar Facebook account e shomoy shavi silo jar kani to shomoy legese. Anyway, no excuse. Thank you so much for attending the session. Stay home, stay safe, and take care of yourself. Assalamualaikum.